we're in Yorkshire, well known for its stunning countryside and contrasting coastal scenes. Agriculture is deep rooted in these parts and I'm here to meet the farmers and their animals and I'm going to ask questions about how pigs are reared for the food that reaches our plates. I'm John Bates and this is British Pig Farm. At the heart of many communities is often the local and the food on offer as well as the beer is increasingly important. Pork forms a vital part of our menu here, um, it's one of the most popular dishes we serve um, and it forms part of our specials menu, our Sunday lunch menu of course and um, it's the cornerstone of our morning breakfast. The pork itself is very tasty, it's very flexible, um, the, the chefs love working with it and they can do all sorts of wonderful things with pork. Britain has a successful pig farming industry, producing around 9 million pigs a year, which is only about half of the pork we need to meet shoppers' demands. In Britain, pig farms come in all different shapes and sizes, but there are two main production systems, the indoor and the outdoor system. I'm here to meet Richard Lister, who farms an indoor system. Um, we have a thousand sows on the farm here where we are today. Um, we'd hope to rear 27,000 pigs on this farm this year if everything goes well with production. So Richard, is this sort of unit um, typical in the UK? Yep, two thirds of the sales in the UK are housed on indoor units and this will be quite typical of one of those units. And we're extremely proud of our welfare standards and the loose housing of our sows. So Richard, we've come into the farrowing area. Explain a little bit about this room. OK, this is the farrowing room. The, the mum, the sow, will come, in to farrow, come into the farrowing room a week before she's due to farrow. And then uh, she'll spend four weeks suckling her piglets. The farrowing crate in which she sits is primarily designed to protect the piglets from being overlaid by the mum. It enables her to get down easily and with support from the crate um, rather than flopping down. Richard is now taking me to look at an indoor system. OK, so Richard, you, you brought me into this new building. This is a fully slatted system. Um, the advantage of that is that the faeces and urine pass through the slats and so the pigs are not met playing in their uh, faeces and urine, which is you know, good from a hygiene point of view, good from a production point of view. Piglets are weaned into here at four weeks of age. That's when they come off the mums. And then they've got a nice heated mat at the back of the pen there special baby piglet feed in the feed hopper and clean water coming through the drinker nipples. So the piglets will come here at, at four weeks, as I say, they'll then spend another seven weeks in here and will be approximately 11 weeks of age and at 35 kilos when they leave the farm. The amount of space that must be provided for pigs is laid down in legislation. And as you can see in this barn, the pigs have the freedom to enjoy that space looking after the environment is a large part of being a British pig farmer. There's a raft of legislation and voluntary schemes to comply with. Not all areas of the countryside can cope with pigs outdoors, as the soil needs to be able to drain well to stop it becoming too muddy or rutted. Around 40% of Britain's breeding sows are kept outdoors, and I'm here to meet Vicky and Kate, who farm an outdoor system. We started off with 800 breeding cells here and we've now got 1,700. We have an outdoor breeding herd which Kate and I set up two years ago as well. We pride ourselves on our high welfare systems that we've got in place. The pigs can exhibit all the natural behaviour. They can root around, they can run around, they can do all the things that they want to do. We're very much focused on cost of production. We look at our figures every month. Um, we know that it's a lot more efficient to produce a pig indoor than it is outdoor but we look at different things like the premium that we get paid um, and also obviously the capital cost on an outdoor uh, production is a lot less because we haven't got buildings so that's you've got to weigh up all these parts 
It's really important that we move fields every two years so that we're not having a massive impact on that field that we're in so that uh, the drainage and all those issues remain in good condition. There is a lot of science involved in pig farming. We've got a nutritionist, so an independent nutritionist who comes around and offers us lots of help and support. Um, we use the vets. British pig farmers operate to some of the highest welfare standards in the world, including standards set by government and others from the Red Tractor and the RSPCA Assured Schemes. Red Tractor is responsible for auditing farm standards and the supply chain. Just about all of the major supermarkets use the Red Tractor logo and we know that it appears on about £12 billion pounds worth of food every year. About two thirds of shoppers recognise our logo. That makes it just about the most recognised logo, um, British food logo. Of those people that recognise the logo, 60% say that it has a positive influence on what they buy when they shop. And you supplement your inspections with that of um, inspections that are conducted by other professionals, such as vets? Within the pig scheme, we have a quarterly report that must be completed by a veterinarian. So we get four veterinary reports a year, as well as the independent assessment that we do. Herd health is key to a successful business. And pork producers work in partnership with their vets. They rely on the vet's expertise to maintain herd health. I'm joining vet Duncan Berkshire on his rounds. In the UK we have veterinary surgeons who've specialised into working with pigs and because of that we work at a high level with our farmers uh, so that we can make sure that we get the best uh, for the pigs on farm so we can help with their uh, overall health, their welfare, all of the nutrition side of things, genetics, There's little bits of everything which come together so we very much work as part of the team with our farmers moving forward so we can get the best out of the pigs on farm. A nice way of thinking about it, John, is to do a comparison to uh, school kids. So uh, on a farm we've got a lot of young animals, and just in primary schools we've got a lot of young kids. And when we have groups of young children together, what happens, they got, get little uh, coughs, sneezes, snuffles, that kind of stuff, as little bits of, uh, of illnesses run around. But it's very similar on a pig farm in that we've got a lot of young animals, and you can get odd little bits of uh, illness rumble around in the young pigs. So it's, it's a very good analogy in that, in that fact. There's loads of different ways that we can actually help uh, either uh, increase the health or at least maintain the health and, and help get these pigs better. So the most important one of those is to make sure that the disease doesn't come onto the farm to begin with. So as much as possible maintaining the high health nature of our animals on site. There's other interactions potentially that we could put in there. So there's sometimes nutritional aspects, genetic aspects. Uh, if there's uh, possibilities, there's vaccinations that we can put into. And also sometimes with uh, bacterial diseases, we also uh, require treatment with antibiotics. Certainly the pig industry has uh, recognises it has a part to play and it, it should be a responsible user of antibiotics. It's still a fact however that pigs do get sick and when they get sick they need treating. What's really important is the pig gets the right drug at the right dose at the right time. And the National Pig Association released our uh, antibiotic stewardship year really just to be able to demonstrate to the government and the public how responsible we are being um, and to show that we are very interested in ensuring that antibiotics will be available for anyone that needs them going forwards. Behind day-to-day -day pig farming lies a supply chain and support provided by scientists. I'm here at Newcastle University to meet Sandra Edwards, a professor of agriculture and a leading expert in pig welfare. Pigs who are well handled will be less stressed when people are around, not surprising perhaps. And we can measure things like they will have quicker farrowings at that point because they're not worried about people being about or if they're growing pigs they'll actually eat better and grow faster. So again in many of these things whatever is benefiting the animals is also benefiting the farmer in production terms. Pig welfare is not really about production systems it's about how well you run those systems. The skills and the care of the people who look after the animals is what really makes the difference, whatever system you have. So the reality of the situation really is that uh, pigs are uh, produced for human consumption. Uh, so at some point they have to go off farm and uh, be produced into the pork products uh, that then enter uh, the retail chain.
it's tough and it's not a job really, it's a lifestyle and I do think that you're cut, either cut out for it or you're not because it's not for everybody. <laughs> Here's the proof, if any were needed, with all the efforts by the farmers to produce this fabulous looking food and not waste it, whether that's for breakfast or a meal later in the day.